we can go ahead and get started. So um, the thought process is a name. What do, what do we want to call the group itself? Tritown says all three. Um, the select board um, would like Brookfield to open up the door for other people. That was the original conversation probably a year ago, um, you know, and not exclude towns. Uh, so it doesn't really matter where you're from. This is Thank you. approached by the Orange County Sheriff's Department Emergency Management in the beginning. So that sort of opens up the door for a lot of towns. Uh, not that those towns would further away utilize this. But I've been working with um, uh, Jim Wheatley, uh, EMD for Emergency Manager Director, EMD for Lebanon. And we have the okay, if we get wiped out up here, they, they have a shelter open that we can send volunteers down there and our people down there. Um, so I'm just trying to put enough distance between the towns because when something happens, it usually, like the last storms that we have gotten, if you watch the Green Mountain uh, power map, that was Springfield. Springfield was getting decimated and we were fine up here. So to keep your resources in town close by and having other resources to use further away is the best course of action. Um, so that's, that's what we've been, what I've been working on trying to do and it, it's been, been good. So I think the Tritown is a good beginning name, Tritown, Emer uh, Tritown uh, Shelter Group. And the parent is Brookfield Emergency Management Shelter Group. Um, and we can just run it that way and mainly introduce it as the Tritown aspect. Uh, I, be I believe talking to Scott months ago when he was opening up the uh, Randolph Police Department, as they get funding for, for that, hey guys, um, as they get funding for the town, the, the, count, the, um, the village, going outside of the village, policing that, uh, they would like to, from my understanding, take care of the two other towns, meaning the Tri-Town. So thinking larger scope, we'll use the bigger name and run that way. How does people feel about that? If, if that sounds like a, a good idea, we can change the name at any time because it's not a corporation. Um, you know, it's not a problem. So if, if you think that's a good idea to run that way right now, throw your hand up. Tri-Town Tri Emergency, uh, Tri-Town Shelter Group. Oh, we're dropping the emergency? No. <laughs> we the parent is Brookfield Brookfield. Emergency Management Correct. Shelter Group. Yeah. Right. No, no, I, I knew that, but I just was okay. Never mind. Yeah. I'll shut up and take notes and <laughs> you'll correct me later. Not a problem. Yes. I would I just want to say I think emergency would be great to leave in there because there's another group that's looking at opening a shelter for just like regular shelter? Oh, like long-term shelter. Like you can stay there every night kind of thing. Right, in the yeah, winter. I call that a long-term. Okay, yeah. um, and so okay, perfect. it might be better to add emergency. Thank you for, for throwing that, because that's important. So. Well, I think what, excuse me, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I think whatever um, allows it to be easy to remember. Because if you're in an emergency, right. you don't want to have to come up with a complicated name to say, call right. the hubba da ba da ba da ba da ba da right. Well, we can so. bring it into an acronym. Well, um, there's so many of those. I know. <laughs> but, you know, as, as time goes forward and as we grow and as we get to know each other and as we work yeah. together, um, it's, it's going to flow out just yeah. like any other business aspect name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I still don't even have our the... Julie, Julie's group, RDC, R uh, oh, R yeah, no. yeah, see, I don't even have that acronym. No, yeah. and then the R U H. And I don't even know what it's called. I said, yeah, the, the thing yeah. Julie is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knows what I'm talking yeah. about. So it's, it's yeah. okay to have a long name. Yeah. Um, and then we can put it into an acronym and just run it that way. 
and we're, we're a collective group of three towns <coughs> working together and using different facilities. I agree with the emergency thing too. Yeah. Okay. I think that's yeah, I, I like it too, but I was thinking it was too long. But, yeah, well, but you're yeah, right. If we got to define what we are, kind of thing. Yeah. So, everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Well, that takes care of that that part. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to go over tonight. We're going to do a sort of a, a mock take in. I, I ask people to. Um, come up with something reasonable for what's happening in their, their little sphere um, and why they're, they're stepping into a uh, shelter. Um, and during, during a, a shelter situation, whether it's a warming, cooling shelter, if warming, cooling, you want to have snacks and you want to have water and coffee, possibly. And I have the coffee maker. I have 24 bottles of water sitting. I want to get food I want to get the snacks all sitting and somebody has to take control of that I don't know if you can do that mm -hmm. at your house mm -hmm. um, so Amy's the, the, um, the <coughs> no I was waving my husband oh. <laughs> um, I didn't agree. <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's really easy is the shelter is the shelter manager um, and that's just basically the person keeping track of the, the stuff that we have and keeping track of the people and just making sure that things are move, running smoothly. And you're really good with the communication stuff. Would you want to be a communications person building, building the tree? Sure. Yep. And so what, what we'll do is as, as things go forward, um, the state says, okay, we're, we're in a state of emergency. We have this ice storm coming in. Um, we'll evaluate with the select boards um, of, you know, should we stay dormant? Should we do a, just sort of stay aware? And if we're gonna stay aware and possibly open a, a, a shelter of some sort, um, then I'll let Amy know if I can't get a hold of Amy, then I'm gonna call you. And we're gonna just use a chain and then you can send out a blast. Hey, it looks like we're gonna be opening. We need people to show up. Who is you? My, my friend Rich likes to use. Ann. 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 Got it. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll do that and we'll start refining that a little bit more um, and see how that all transpires and see if that works. Now, everybody sitting here today, excluding Kevin, because I said I don't want him in a shelter volunteering. Um, he's, he's the fire department for Brookfield. Um, he's vital to the shelter and the different things that are, that are happening to him and his guys. And, um, but having a firefighter in a shelter, he's he or, or she or whoever is going to be running around doing their job mm -hmm. as we're staying warm <laughs> somewhere and trying to, to help people. So, uh, he would be directing people to, to us as he runs into to situations if, if we are indeed open. Um, but like I said, the, Kevin and, his, and the guys over there are vital to a, a successful shelter. Um, so I have a question about snacks. Yeah. Um, obviously they usually have an expiration date. Yes. So what I wanna do is try to get stuff um, donated mm -hmm. to us, and I'm gonna be working on that very, very soon here. Uh, get it donated. It will sit on a shelf in one of the bigger totes. And when it becomes out of date, I, I would use a, a Sharpie on it saying what date it becomes mm -hmm. out of date. Keep an idea of what you have in there. And when it goes out of date, then bring it down to the town hall. And whoever walks in, hey, you want a candy <laughs> bar? <laughs> you know, and just and get rid of it and we'll replenish it. Okay. Um, you know, I would say 30 days before the expiration, we need to replenish it okay. and get rid of the old stuff. Um, so anyway, so everybody here sitting, are you everybody willing to volunteer in a shelter? How it's going to work is um, when a state of emergency arises, we'll keep an eye on it. Then we'll put a call out saying, hey, can you can you volunteer? If you say, already said you can, but there's issues in your own life, you know, you can say, I can't. And that's fine. But I want numbers. I want a lot of people 
they say they can because you always get the people that can't. And um, you're going to need shifts. Right. And if it's, a, if it's a warm and cooling shelter, then that's going to be certain hours of the day. If it's going to be a sleep, sleep in, that's going to be um, an overnight kind of thing. It's usually nobody ever shows up, but you never know. You need two people on board pretty much at all times. Um, I want to get a couple of decks of cards. I want to get a couple of simple board games to throw in the box. So the volunteers, hopefully, will be just playing cards. Um, <laughs> if, if they're not, then, of course, you hand that stuff over to the people that are you know, being sheltered mm -hmm. to have something to do. Uh, you know, it's going to be relatively simple. The, most of the shelters that I've seen open are sparse in people that go to them. The one in Barrie, during the flooding, they were set up, I can't remember how many costs, but they had a, the auditorium filled with cots. And there was a bunch not being used. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a small handful of people, maybe 15 people that were there. And they were geared for, I think, about 100 people. So, I'm surprised that it was people. Yeah, that's, that's what I saw. I, they, they wouldn't give me numbers. I was right. really not supposed to go in kind of thing, but I talked to the guy and um, somebody that I know with the Red Cross said, yeah, he's fine. And just, you know, just come look and go. You know, no pictures, no no anything like that because mm -hmm. it's it's not not cool. And it definitely is not cool. Um, but still, that's a nice experience. Yeah, yeah, it was an eye opener. You know, that, that whole thing, you know, giving out food, giving out water, giving out clean out kits giving all this stuff out to people, it was definitely a, like, oh my goodness, this is huge kind of thing. Um, so yeah, the food, food and water, having snacks, having some games for, for people to play with, um, inexpensive stuff because things are going to get lost and then we'll have to get rid of it. Um, getting, getting cots, I was corrected by, um, at the seminar, I was corrected that it's two hours to get cots delivered. Mm -hmm. It took 18 for Randolph to get the cots, yeah. but they had to pull, because it was such a huge incident, um, they had to pull them from southern, southern New Hampshire. So it was, a, it was a trek for them. They had to look around to get them. Can but I they have, yep. um, Everybody, this is my husband, Jack, and he raised his hand. <laughs> oh. I don't want to get involved, okay, but as an outsider listening to Please. you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Please turn, no, turn that Yeah, he's off. a camera yeah. shy. Yeah, I'll, I'll break it. I swear I will. <laughs> um, you mentioned, like, with Kevin there, that the fire department will be doing their thing. Have you given any thought to emergency services in case somebody all of a sudden has a heart attack because of the stress yeah. they're under? You should think about On, on site? Yeah. On site. Okay, so that's that's something that was talked. Thank you for bringing that up. And that I was. That you should have, if nothing else, you should get whoever's going to be involved in your group. You might want to get them trained at least CPR. Yeah, like yeah we, we've, we've talked about it, and thank you for bringing that up um, so we can revisit it. So I do want people to get CPR training. I'm trying to contact and find the right person with the state emergency management to get it for free uh, because it, it's a costly thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm certified in, in the whole CPR and Stop the Bleed, which is two different things, mm -hmm. um, and I think everybody should if they can. We have um, uh, Matt Parrish with the ambulance service that has agreed to stage an ambulance at any um, location that we open. And what that means is that ambulance will be here and it will be dispatched from this location. So if they need to leave, they're gonna leave. But they'll return back to this location or the other location. Um, they won't return back to their headquarters unless they have to restock their items, but um, we're definitely on board with having all of that Good. available. Sounds great. Yeah. And and that is White River Ambulance, just so you know. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's already addressed and we're, we have that relationship and that okay. Can you do a training for us? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him up. I already, you know, I hit him up for a first aid kit already. Um, I got Narcam from him, which I... I didn't even think of. Maybe but I should because I'm on the board. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> but I, I think I think he'd be willing to do something. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll also look out to the state as well to see if they can 
fund some of it or or whatnot because the state folks they get recertified every year mm -hmm. and why can't we be part of it right you know we're we're working with the state we're helping the state but at least to get going maybe right. um not going to convince them. Mm -hmm. um how are you keeping track of your inventory it's going to be very easy handwritten and as we don't we don't want a bunch of inventory because inventory has to be stored and we don't have that place the the goal is as as was discussed before is open up a shelter if it's an overnight shelter to turn it over to the red cross asap okay um well no because i my mind was just playing with databases what yeah. what we could do to make it simple and easy right. just so we can keep track of yeah right now system. right now I, I think keeping track on a piece of paper and taking a picture of it and texting it to everybody is probably the easiest right now mm -hmm. um, as we move forward yes that's that's a great idea uh, it's just you I, have a librarian in your midst yeah. now who wants to know where things are right which is which is good so that's that's what that's what we're looking at and um i'm also a database person yeah mm -hmm. i'm also a database person yep mm -hmm. so the the cots and whatnot can be delivered within uh a couple of hours and we just get got to make sure that we get the location certified with the red cross as a red cross shelter approved and there should be zero problems with this location and, and any other location because they're all public buildings so this isn't but you've got ada doors and, and all that other stuff so that's something we I'd like to work on sometime soon. Um, like I said in the past, I've been working on this since January, February, and finally, you know, this is the third meeting. Um, so it takes time to to build stuff, and it's a part-time thing. You know, it's a, it, it, I'm going to use the word hobby. It's a hobby. You know, and and you only have so much time to knit. You only have so much time to do X X Y Z. So it's it's taken a few minutes. I've heard um, the, the winter forecast yeah. is to be above normal in temperature. Yeah. I don't know about precip. I haven't seen anything on that. But to me, what that means is we have the potential for more ice. Correct. And that's what the March, the March tabletop of this year that they were doing is uh, basically a wipeout of electric for 5 to 20 days or something of, of that nature. from just lower than us but will affect us um southbound vermont new hampshire and massachusetts so mm -hmm. knowing that that's in the midst it's good to be prepared and most most of us will stay home you know i got a generator at home i'm good the power goes out boom it's going i'm watching tv <laughs> you know and everybody's in the dark um but you know that's a lot of people in vermont and new hampshire but there's a lot of people that don't have that so we want to be able to help them. Uh, so that sort of closes that aspect out of what I have to say. We can have a Q and A in a few minutes here. But what we're going to do is basically an intake. So we're going to have, if you don't mind, there's a vest right over by the door there. Okay. If you want to put that on. Sure. Is <laughs> the official vest? Um, it's what I can get a hold of. It's not what I want. Yeah, this one, I'm going to jump over here. It's right over. Oh, okay. <coughs> you're on your inside? You're the inside person. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, I have one question just thinking about this. Because yes. It seems calm. We're here talking calmly. And I imagine that when you're in a shelter, it's not calm because somebody just left two of their dogs in the house and, right. and they can't call their grandson because their phone doesn't work it sounds yep, like I'm it listening. would be kind of um stressful yeah stressful yeah, it's 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 gonna it's gonna be stressful people are gonna be upset um and as you know the what i talked about during the probably the first meeting is that pe we need to stay calm and be positive um, the requirements for, for a volunteer person is a clean, uh, clean background, uh, the ability to de-escalate uh, problems, um, a calm attitude, 
And that's, you know, that's one of those things that when you step into the role, you got to put your problems aside and just look at that individual. And that's why I ask people to think of different, different issues that they might be having. Yes. And I had experience of being one of the directors for the North Springfield warming shelter. And one of the things I found there is that the people, the volunteers really did open, were open and welcoming to anybody that came through the door, no matter how difficult it might have been. Right. Okay. And it was something that just seemed inherent in them rather than have being all befuddled. But it, again, it was training, being in these sorts of meetings yep. to build, to make you aware of what you might encounter. Right. And that, that was a big help. So you mentioned and, something about when an animal, like if somebody does bring an animal. Yeah, as a, as a private, as a private um, shelter, we have the right to refuse. Once it gets turned over to the um, Red Cross, they take animals. There's an organization out there that can bring in crates, bring in a trailer, and all that other stuff that, that needs to be done with uh, pets. So then we just tell the person they can't? We're, we're going to have to do case by case. You know, okay. it's, it's going to have to, you know, we're going to have to be respectful to the people here mm -hmm. that's being sheltered. Correct. Um, and respectful to the person coming in and find a happy medium. And it, it might come in that you have somebody in, in a shelter that says, I'm allergic to cats. Mm -hmm. Five feet, I'm going to start sneezing. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, 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 I'm sorry, and you can't bring your cat in. Can we secure it in your car? Can we, you know, we got to figure something out. And Ann and, I, Ann and I will work, car. yeah, Ann and I will work together and try to figure out a solution as of me being a volunteer in the shelter. Okay. Okay. And once the Red Cross takes over, then... It's their problem. It, it, they, they're good to go. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're running. So the requirements for, for a volunteer, once again, was a clean background check, um, the ability to de-escalate situations, a calm attitude, uh, vol volunteer duties at a shelter is being trustworthy, um, respecting co confidential confidentiality I'm about the, our guest, non-judgmental, um, giving feedback to the EOC and the shelter manager. The EOC is the Emergency Operations Center, and that would be myself on the EMD, and uh, Kevin's part of that as well during during incidents. He doesn't really know that, but he is. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim is a part of it, which he's road, road foreman. Um, uh, You're just going to give me these list of people because I'm not yeah. even going to try and take them yeah. down now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, intaking of guests is part of the duties of the of a shelter person. Uh, checking with the guests to see if they need anything. Um, so doing, doing that, Amy would be standing, you can go ahead and stand over there. Who has a, a, a little story of why they might be here? Anybody? I, I can make a story up. Okay. So go, go, go over to the door. Oh, and the other thing that's on is these um, vests, and we'll be on the vest that I can oh, get a hold of. That's that's correct. Is a flashlight. Yep. Um, and the flashlights because if the generator goes down, now we're all in the dark. So the volunteers will have a couple of flashlights just in yes. case. And then at that point, we need to figure out an evacuation plan. So <clears throat> this lady's walking into the shelter. You folks would be more so, especially if let's say. Um, Kevin has a uh, ex-wife that's abusive, and he has a restraining order against her. And we would encourage him to stay over this way. Okay, no media is allowed in here. Um, news people, they're not allowed. So this this lady comes in, and her story is, and she can't see anybody. Oh hi! Oh you. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm. Well, my electricity just went out, and my pipes are frozen, and... Oh, not good. No. 
No, so I thought I'd try here. Okay, so you have a small dog? I have a small dog. He's orange. He's like Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the people that are already here. Is anybody yeah. here? So at, at this point, we're going to try to have two-way radios. Okay. And she can radio Anne. the other per- <laughs> and yeah. radio know, over and say. I need to know if anybody that's already here is allergic to dogs. It's and my comment is poodle. the person coming after her probably is. <laughs> so I don't think it can just be who's in here. Well, we can we, we can person. we can work on this. This is this well, is work in progress. Guess. So she's gonna keep it in her, her her little thing. Okay. Okay. Is anybody here allergic to dogs? No. Is that what I'm doing? No. Right. Yeah, yep. it's making and it easy. Everybody says no. <laughs> no. Let's go with no. Okay. And so then what well, now we're gonna allow you to have your dog, but if somebody comes in, so we're much. gonna have to ask you to, to remove the dog. Maybe put it in your oh, what do I do? Yeah. And the Red Cross is going to be taking over, say, which they have um, the, Red the ability. And 211. Is it in a box? Or is it in her hand? I think she's just holding We're going to eat it later. That's right. It'll be a squash. Yeah, pretend. Yeah. So the dog is in her arms. Do we have dog crates? No, she's gonna keep it. She's got a, she's got a large. Right, pocket. I know. I'm just don't yep. want you to get upset. Right. And I just want to be sure that I have some way to deal with your dog, if something happens that you can't hold it in your arms. Then, then, and so then I'm the just. Dog will go back in her car until the oh. cross comes in. Okay. Right. All right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's so a good solution. Show you. And so what your, do I your job would be, because let's say somebody's behind waiting oh, okay. to come in, so to come up and greet this, this new guest okay. that's here and, and show her. them this is the bathroom. Okay. Over here we have snacks, Orient water. You. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I will take Kim now. Okay. And, Thank you. and okay, so Kim, mm-hmm. this is our space here. Mm-hmm. I want you to know the bathrooms are over here. Thank you. Um, and this, there are men's and a women. The yes, there is. There's a men's and a women's. Is there a place for my dog? Uh, no. Okay. You, your dog has to go. Yeah. Uh, um, pertinent information. Where are you getting Do, Am I supposed to be taking it down or did she take yeah, it down? She wrote, uh, it's she all wrote, down. Okay. It's already down. Just making sure so, you couldn't hear it. Do you see all these cots? Mm-hmm. Where would you like to go? Oh, right over there. Do I ask her where she wants to go? If okay. they're open, so why let not? So me, let me take you over here to, you, to your cot. Well, so that, just to a table, right? So that right. you can put your purse down. You can relax here. And then what? And then we have snacks over okay, on this table, are, water. But are they allowed to just go and take snacks? <laughs> they yes. should be able to. Okay. But if, if we have a lot of people yeah. and we have limited, okay. then it's monitored. Okay. All right. So right now, there's where the snacks are. Okay. Do you need a cup of coffee? I'd love a cup of coffee. Okay. So I have a helper. Great. And the helper's yep. going to make the coffee. <laughs> and then she'll get you a cup of coffee. Do you have a Wi-Fi password? Yeah. <laughs> that is up to the facility. And we have Connect be... Project. So it's automatic. You just sit down, open it up, connect project, and you'll be connected. Right. There. And then the, the other thing, which I forgot, because we're all learning here, is we need to ask at the front door, do you, are you, not that I need to know what you're on for medication, but do you have the medication that you need? Oh, good point. Do you have your old? So who's asking that question? That should be at the front door. Mm-hmm. And then, and then are the people uh, that their might. Medications or What's that? Are the people keeping their medications? Or they yeah, they're holding their own, but we're asking that because um, if you got flooded out, you ran out of your house. Mm-hmm. And yes. let's let's say you're you say I'm diabetic, and I forgot my insulin. I forgot my insulin. Okay, at this point, we depends on the to- on the roads. On the road conditions and, and all that other stuff, we might send you back out to go get that. If the road conditions are bad, we have the ambulance service right here. Now we're going to bring them in, and they're going to 
help you along with what's needed. Right. What ambulance service is it? The White River, River Ambulance White Service. White River. Do they run the so medical service? I believe they do. So we really but they can. We, they we can, can also be in communication with hospitals right. to make sure they've got what the patient needs. Right. Most people don't leave without their medication. Sometimes somebody does. Into situations. Right. right. So that, run is that's, that's how rough, you know, it's, it's a rough cut. Everything is, is going to be by what's happening around you. Um, and then let's say somebody came to the door and they're, and they're irate and they can't be calmed down. Well, at that point, I'm gonna ask them to Amy's going to say, hey, Let's call, call the police uh, department. We, we get, we right, get an yeah. issue. <laughs> you know, she can say, wait right here, and she call the police department. And then, okay, let me, let me have you fill out this form, which is the overnight one, yeah. which we're not having anybody fill out. But she's, she's detaining that person with stuff. something to do. Okay. And then Scott or JM or Bill pull up. And now it's their problem, kind of thing. You know, the, the, the police in the town. And what about, um, drunk? what about drunk? Drunk people, we're going we're gonna to have to sort of wing it if they're a calm drunk. We're going to have to, you know, ask the, quest, the hard questions. Do you have alcohol on you? How much do you think you might have drank already? Mm -hmm. Why don't we keep you over here, away from all the other people? That probably won't happen, but it could. And that's why um, the ambulance service gave us Narcan, just in case, because you never know what's going to happen. My belief is we won't run into those problems, mm -hmm. because somebody that is taking narcotics, somebody that is intoxicated, they don't have the ability to make the right judgment, so they're going to stay in their house. You know, sometimes. Sometimes. What about and law enforcement? Are we going to ask people that? We're. I I need to check on that, but this this facility can put a sign out that says no weapons. The school, the college, it's clearly stated no weapons allowed on premises. So if it already says that. So if it already says that, we're good. I don't know if you have that. No. on your sign. Maybe yeah, that's something to look at now. Um, because at that point that they enter the facility, they have a firearm on them. The minute that somebody sees it and says something to the volunteer, you can bring the police in and have them deal with it. Wep and, no, and weapons also include knives. Yes. Yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. Is okay. that something that yeah. we can ask people to just lock in their cars? We can. Yes. It's not an automatic but, yeah, but I mean, keep, plan for the worst and hope for the best. So always think, okay, I might have to call the police. Hey, Ann, I noticed that you have a, a sidearm. Could you put that in your car for me? Because it really shouldn't Some people be here. May, I mean, a lot and of people if, have knives. Yeah, and if, or a knife. Or, yeah. And if you're, oh, I always carry a gun with me. <laughs> well, um, sir, sorry. Yeah, okay, now we need to get the cops because now you're being a jerk. Yeah. You know. But no offense, but where are the police? I mean, they're not really very accessible. They are during a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. they, they, they will be ready for, for this, and they will be fully aware of Or score quite shelter. spread out, I think. That right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. As, as time moves forward, Randolph is growing. Hopefully, George gets his stuff together, and he can grow. Um, we'll see what time. But we can worry about the worst case scenario and we need to plan for the worst case scenario and keep that in the back of our minds. But we don't need to dwell on it. Most people that are coming into a shelter need the help, want the help, want to comply. Do the cops, this is a mundane question, but do the cops come with bedding? Yes. Okay, that's part that, of the deal. There's a um, pillow, blankets. Mm -hmm. It's a neat little, okay. you know, it's a, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a roll about yay big. It's right, you can pull it up on, on, online. And then there's uh, boxes that come with those cots. And you open up the box and everything's in, in there. Some, some of them even have toothbrushes and all the other stuff in it. 
As so. far as the medications, it's not violating HIPAA if you say to them, if you are on any medications, did you bring them with you? Right, you're not. Right. It's just, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that the Red Cross asks. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know what they are. What they are. I just need to know and them. remind you that, hey, and you might say, holy goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. Oops. <laughs> and you, you need to do something about right. it. Or we need to find the resources to help you do something about it. Is there an established protocol already? Like for the Barry Shelter, is there a protocol for getting people their medications? That I do not know. I don't have the answer, but I can definitely find out. Um, there's a young girl, Lindsay, that is my contact person for the Red Cross, and she does the Lebanon area, she does this area, and her and I need to sit down and, and yeah, chat about know. different things. Yeah. And in fact, she, she mentioned it in Bar uh, Barry when I was there. She's like, we gotta have lunch. <laughs> because she's like, you're like running crazy. Yeah. So, so she's right on board to help out. I just need to get the time to reach out to her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. So as far as procedure goes, there will be somebody welcoming people, right. and then there will be the rest of us out here helping people to coffee in the restrooms and yeah, cots one, and one such. Yeah, one person is, is good. Right, right. So I was just thinking, it, you know, all these very prob probably or not probable things that could happen, people come in and they're in a state, or they're, they have been drinking because they're coping, or they have an addiction so they're not doing well. But I'm wondering if we have enough people, if we don't confront them the minute they come in, but just get somebody to a cot, and then have somebody sit, you know, sit down with them and say, what do you need tonight? And then you go, you clearly, I know, you know, she's drunk. You know, but continue to treat that person. <laughs> it's my time. <laughs> you know? It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> so bring it in, you know, because that'll just log jam and probably right. escalate right. if you say to anybody who's coming in with um, a, a addictive behavior or, well, that, or coping behavior or whatever it is. That, if if somebody know? has that, they're, they're probably going to lie. Of course, so right? bring them in, so, sit so them they're, down. They're gonna, they're gonna lie to Amy's face. Right. That's fine. But then whoever's working inside the shelter plus Amy, you I'm notice things. Over. You of notice course. things. Right. Of course, I and, just and don't at that point you can say, hey, so yeah. how's it going? Spend yeah. a little bit more time with that person yeah. and talk to them. And as things go calmly, you're good to go. Right. Don't worry about it. Right. If it starts escalating, you, you you know to back off right. and get somebody in here that can take care of the problem. And who is that person? So we're a bunch of good old volunteers, and right. so we invite somebody in, we sit them down, we realize that there's a problem. Right. They still have needs. I mean, right. they're still hungry, they still need coffee, Correct. they still need a bathroom, whether we, they're we, we drunk the, or not. We would do the best that we can. Right, who is, are you here? Is it somebody no, with I'm, some I'm, authority? I'm emergency management. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm the emergency director yeah. for Brookfield. So, so I'm gonna be doing other duties my at the duties. shelter? Not the shelter, but uh, I will be in contact with the shelter. Uh, we have, um, holy goodness gracious, Dan Mason. There we go. He's our, um, he's our constable, and he's a volunteer as well. Oh. And he's and, Brookfield's constable. So this is one of our shelters, and then the elementary school is the ele other? The elementary school in Brookfield is, is our secondary sh oh. overnight shelter. Oh. Um, and warming, Excuse cooling, mm -hmm. and VTC is a primary oh, okay. shelter. VTC. Yeah. Okay. And then Lebanon will be our, oh my God, we're in trouble. <laughs> mm. I, I personally yeah. am trained in what they call NAPI training, which is used in the mental health uh, world. <laughs> I work for Collaborative Solutions, which is part of Second Spring Homes. One is in Williamtown. Williamstown is one that. Actually, two in Williamstown. There's a, a, a private one, a state-run one, and then there's one up north. And what they teach you, just putting my dog back, okay, <laughs> is how to defuse a situation, how to stay safe. Right. And that's the most important thing, is you need to stay safe. Right. So yeah, you... if, if I feel like I'm being threatened and I can't, bring this person down, I'm going to go to you and ask you to come up. 
Right. And maybe your personality <coughs> will work better with that person. Right. Sure. Yeah. Where at oh, no, where at BTC do we go? That's the Judd. Um, the Judd building is the pr uh, primary. The secondary is, um, oh, what's the name of it? Student Center. It's right off of the uh, shape. Great, that helps me a lot. The yeah. shape building. I don't know what the Judd building it's, is. The Judd building is, is the building that is closest to the main okay. road. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, like, okay. There's a little U, a U drop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Thank and you. What, what's going to happen with that is... It'll, if if we're using that as, as a shelter, uh -huh. it's going to be obvious yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. that that's okay. that that's being used, and the the elementary school will be obvious right. that cool. it's going to be being used. Um, in terms of supplies, I was thinking about um, infant formula um, or powdered milk or whatever things for babies that yeah. people are going to need, um, and also personal hygiene products. I would think that we really need to have. As, as time moves, if we do an overnight shelter, yeah. which wouldn't be at this facility, mm -hmm. would be at VTC yep. or the uh, elementary school, yep. at that point, we're going to have the Red Cross involved. How, oh. how it works is... And they have all that stuff. And they have, they have a lot of that stuff. Um, so how it... We'll, we'll back up. Um, so an ice storm's moving in. The ice storm hits. Power lines are knocked out. We're looking at um, a week and a half, no, no electric uh, in certain areas. Generators will be fired up, obviously, at VTC and the Brookfield School. And those generators, I forget the, the runtime, but it's, it's phenomenal. I would turn around during this, this incident, and as things happen, I would be in contact with Bob Worley facilities for OSSD. I'd be in contact with email security with VTC. And I would be talking to them and letting them know what's happening. Bob Worley would be sending supplies up to the school, getting ready. VTC already has them on, on site. Then we open up a shelter. Now it's safe to drive, but people need a place to charge the phone. They need a, a warm place to sleep. The Red Cross is now involved. The cots are placed in whichever facility that we're using. They're going to be there. And if they're not there yet, the MRC um, with the state will send volunteers as well. So there's, we need to be able to hold our own for a short amount of time. I say 72 hours. You know, and then we can step right. back because the Red Cross can roll in in a short amount of time. The state can roll in in a short amount of time. However, if it's a large incident, we need to rely on ourselves. Would you first. ever be proactive and, and you know this ice storm's coming, it's not quite here, um, and you want to make sure that you can get to the place? Right. So would you do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, yeah, all that stuff. Then that, that, that part pre opening is on my shoulders as the emergency mm -hmm. manager director. Mm -hmm. And then I would be reaching out to the other emergency manager directors in, in the area O'Toole um, for Brookfield, uh, Braintree, and Warner for here, and trying to work with them. Can you them. get even you? How am I going to word this? Um, we get alerts for like weather and that sort of thing through mm -hmm. whomever, but you're going to get them earlier than we probably. I get them about the same time that everybody else. I, I would encourage everybody to sign up for a VT alert. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you're not already. Already. Um, and I would put on on the listing, you know, several towns. You know, I put Brookfield, Braintree, mm -hmm. Randolph, Bethel. Um, South Royalton, I would put those down. Why? Because if things are happening there, it's going to probably happen here. Right. So it sort of gives you an idea of what's happening and, and how it's going to close you off as a person. You know, this has nothing to do with the shelter. It has to do with being able to travel and do what you need to do. So if uh, South Royalton and Bethel are getting nailed, 
but we're okay, you maybe want to go north for your groceries instead of going down to <laughs> Lebanon to get your groceries. You know, it's a, it's a good tool to have. Mm -hmm. Is that a, I don't know what BT Alert is. It's, um, I forget the name of the organization. It's a, it's a is federal, it a, it's a federal group oh, it that runs it. Comes yep, it comes phone. on your oh, phone oh, and computer. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a federal BT group. BT Alerts, yeah. Okay. And what they do is they have different areas, like we have VT Alert, New Hampshire has their own, okay. da, 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 but right. they're all combined into the federal. Mm -hmm. The federal, let's say we got nuked through, right. everybody's phone would go off. Yeah. You, you, have, you can't stop your phone from going off because the feds patch into it, right. period. I mean, my phone, I have a phone that I use for Facebook, Thanks. and that phone is not hooked up to a phone line, hasn't been for years, uh -huh. and that went off right. when they sent the uh, They actually the just recent. recently yeah. did a test a, a few weeks ago. Yes. Yeah, everybody's phone went off. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. oh. And that, that, was, that was part of VT Alert. <laughs> it went beep, there were beep, even beeper. kids in school <laughs> whose phones were going off. And they, I mean, these are phones that were shut, basically shut mm -hmm. off, but they were sending the alert. Right. It overrayed. Yeah. It just ran over any security mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, so. What does MRC stand for? I'm trying to remember. Oh. <laughs> I have it written down, of course. Um, so that that's, any, any more questions, thoughts? Well, I, I just want to clarify, because. Yep. Um, I think I've heard you say two things. I'm not sure which one is right. My first, my sense was that you said the Red Cross would be coming in almost immediately. They can. And my second thing I heard was 72 hours yes. in your head. Your thinking yes. is more likely or right. a possibility. So we'll, we'll back up to this. Okay. This should answer yep. this. We'll back up. So at the conference last month, Red Cross did a, a, a thing. I directly asked the guy. I said, so how long does it take to get caught? He told me two hours. And I said, okay. I said, so why did it take 18 hours for Randolph to get 50 cots? And I already had the answer because they were depleted. They, they ran out of stuff. So they had to go southbound and pull stuff, way southbound and pull it up this way. And they had bad roads, they had washed out roads. So they had to maneuver around but they finally got there kind of thing. So that took them 18 hours to get there. Now, I say 72 hours because the state tells you don't expect any help for 72 hours. You're on your own. Now, hopefully they can get there sooner. They want to get there sooner, but if you plan for 72 hours, you should be okay. Well, and that, so that hearing that again, just reinforces from my um, viewpoint, is to make sure we do have enough supplies for people um, to last for 72 hours. Right. And, and that goes back to my concerns about infant formula and hygiene, you know, hygiene, hygiene. products that yeah. just really can't do without. Right. That's, that's something that will, yeah. in okay. the future, definitely, you know, all, all this, this is an infant. Yeah. This sure, is still right. a baby. You know, we're, yeah. we're burping this baby right and now. And changing their diapers. Uh, <laughs> which will so, be yeah. So as we move forward and as we have space to put stuff and as we, we have dollars and donations and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. most definitely, but we got to start somewhere. Yeah. So my, my thing is five to 20 people, one meal and snacks and water. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. our starting point because you got to have a, a step off somewhere. Mm -hmm. right. And that, those supplies will fit in the space less than that piano that's over there. Mm -hmm. right. But we have something is better than having nothing. Mm -hmm. And then at that, you know, if, if we if we got nailed in the middle of this winter, we're, there's no <coughs> way we can do with what we have, then I'm sure some good citizen will go down to the next town that's not affected and pick up stuff. And we can figure out how to, how to pay for that. And I think the state will uh, move products once, if, if this emergency management runs the way they predict it will, I, you know, from the thing yeah. we went to, that was part of it. If it's in one area, if there are supplies in one area, but 
that's not, they will work to get those supplies to where they need to be from outside locations. Right. You know what I mean? So if, yeah. even if there's bad roads or whatever, the state will adjust their supplies and get them to the needed location. Right. Yeah, the Army National Guard is part of this. Yeah. We saw the, mm -hmm. Kevin and I saw the big huge truck with fans and <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, yeah, and those yeah, big yeah. Huge, huge trucks can drive through pretty much anything. Yeah. So is air quality considered um, an emergency issue? I'm just you know reflecting back on the summer. This, and the summer I, I was watching it. Yeah. And I actually had spoken to um, the local hospital here, and found out how many. Just give me a, a, a rough estimate. Is there more cases coming in with asthma issues? Is there mm -hmm. the same? Is there? And there was a little bit heightened. It wasn't like scary, so I, I didn't feel that it was needed to open up any kind of right. shelter kind of thing. Um, so but it I could have lasted left. a lot longer. But it could have lasted, right? Yeah, and a but lot that, of people don't have air. Once again, a lot of people don't have generators. They don't have air purifiers, right. and they're kind of just subject to whatever's coming through. Correct. So, so that's why I was wondering, is like in the shelter have the option of air purifiers, for example, or? Well, that's, that's all federal, federal dollars that you would have to get grants and whatever, uh -huh. and nobody has that, um, that they don't at have this it point. Yet. That's interesting. As we move forward, and weather gets worse, <coughs> yes, that stuff mm -hmm. is going to be looked at. That's all stuff that we have to plan right. possibilities for. We don't need it right now, right? Right now, today, no. Tomorrow, right. no. Right. VLCT just published next summer, really their next list of grants. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it, so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's where we yes. Do we do you have a, a a dream date for our group being a go group? <laughs> <laughs> Basically tomorrow if we needed it. Oh, okay. So we're whatever, however we're communicating, we could get a call right. tomorrow and then so, we show up at VTC. Or here. Or, right, 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 right. We'll find out. Okay. Yeah. I just we're, 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 gonna, we're moving forward, but we're, okay. we need to be willing. I just want to know when to be on alert. We're, we're going to fall on our face. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, and that's normal. And, and Not that's necessarily. Okay. I, no, I'm, yeah. I so think it's I always really plan for the worst. Great. We're, we're going to fall on our face. So if we already have that known, we know how to pick ourselves up. Um, we need more than what we have. It's volunteer. There's sure. no budget for it. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we work have a on all that stuff. Bit of a budget. We do. Did that get approved? I thought so. No. Okay. I haven't heard. I thought I saw it in Brookfield. Brookfield, I thought, had a little bit money. Yeah. yeah, I thought that I saw it in Randolph's select board something or other. Oh, too. good. But that, that has to be approved by, there's, there's a lot of. Oh, you, yeah, no, I know. There's a lot of stuff that has to be. Yeah, jump, your, yeah. Coops you need to play with, yeah. So that, that's where, where we stand right now. So if everybody in this room is willing to volunteer, and we have other people from the, the last meeting that are willing to, to volunteer, Anne's going to build a tree, and she already started, which yeah. was pretty cool. Uh, can we add a column to this? Sure. That asks for preference of communication, like a phone. Ah. Like, I need to know if these are cells or home phones. Okay. And then if their communication preference is phone or email. Right. I have on the other form that <coughs> where... Do you have that? Did you give the that original? to Ed? Um, yeah. I think it's right here in front of Kim, maybe. But I have. Oh, I wrote all over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my great! Oh my god! Yeah, I got, I got, I got well, more. I'm out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I got it though. noted on there whether it's a home phone, <laughs> yeah, if it's you're a cell phone, like, you're going to be if, the front you know, person. That kind of thing. Oh, so that's yeah, on there. Right like, down now. And I, so okay, Pat, pass those down. Take one. What the preference is for primary. Right. Oh, that does that's not on here, but I have some Ooh, of that. My number's wrong. I've got more information yep, at home that it. was Correct. on here. Oh, my number's wrong. wrong. That's not my problem. <laughs> Who did it? Richard probably wrote it down. No, may I please have the corrected version? I just have to torment poor Rich. 
It's my goal in life. I don't know how right, I. So we're we're moving on on the one hour. Just the one hour, one hour and, mark. And you realize that the bills are on in 45 minutes, so I will be out of here before eight. What, dear? It's just nine seven, so not okay. nine three. Okay, no problem. Oh yeah, Tina. That's yeah. easily fixable. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't have an iPhone. See, Mo Jones which is a TV. I don't get me. Oh, you what? So got I said I don't have. Yeah, I don't. But initially, did you say what? So did you say what? So what? So what? Email account. Like uh, I'm assuming you have a file cabinet and files at your house with all this folder all in it, correct? With the sign-ins from before? Just general information. Yes, yeah. it's all in this notebook. Oh, because you just really right. You know, I might, for some reason, ask you to provide me with a copy of that too, just because. Fine. Yeah, I got a cop. Actually, what I'll do is I'll ask right. the next time you come over or something like that, I'll run it through my scanner and then I'll have it all digitized. Uh, digital. yeah. Okay, so um, we're, we're at pretty much the 730 mark. Okay. And I, I, I like to keep things on time as, as possible because um, everybody has lives. Everybody has stuff happening. So my original statement last meeting was <clears throat> the next two months we were going to not have a meeting because of the holidays. Wrong. Now, I was sort of given a little pushback, which is great. Yes, if you do that. So I have, I have chosen not to step on the toes of any other organization of Brookfield. The last Thursday, yeah, the last Thursday of the month. Now that falls the day before no, no, it won't fall the it, day before because the last, the, the third Thursday of the month is Thanksgiving, or is it the fourth? Or the fourth, fourth Sunday? A fourth, fourth, fourth Thursday, Thursday? I can't remember right now. Thanksgiving's the twenty-third. Right. So right. you've got the thirtieth, November thirtieth. Was I doing the fourth or the third? Fourth. Okay, fourth. Oh, so okay, I looked. Yeah, at it's the third. Oof. See, isn't yeah. So do we want to have a meeting on the thirtieth? Of November. Of November. What day is that? It's a, th it's a Thursday. Thursday. Oh, okay. Unless yeah. there's an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> then we'll be here anyways. <laughs> I think so. Yes, that's the week after Thanksgiving. So, okay, so, so are you okay with hosting that? The 30th on a Thursday? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be here. Wait a minute. Okay. Why is These are my contacts. Oh, I okay, don't thank know. you. I can't come because I'm like going to be at the holiday right. printmaking class at the Waverly. Oh, that's so fun. Okay. I'm going to do that. Crap. Let's talk about that. Just sign up. <laughs> and holiday Okay, so my, my, my agenda is, is dry at this point because I've gone over the stuff that, that I felt was needed. Um, what do we want to try to go over more? of the logistics aspect? The next meeting, you mean? Yeah. I mean, I'd like to talk about transportation and yep. options for, like, getting us to the, if we want to volunteer, but, I mean, every emergency we've had recently, like, that was a problem, getting, yeah. traveling on the back roads was a right. problem. Yeah. So I'd just like to talk about that. What are, how do we do it? How are we going to handle that? Okay. I think when the message goes out, you should say that. You should reply mm -hmm. and say, Absolutely, but I need transportation. Mm -hmm. and, right. and then, who's and then we'll see. Then everyone will be able to see. Who right, right. It would be good right. to know who lives close to each other. As okay. Well. The yeah. the other thing that we didn't cover, and I'm I, so I, I sort of lied. Um, <laughs> we we need to figure out what people are comfortable for a schedule aspect. So we're going to do a warm and cooling shelter. It's open from this hour to this hour, and that's during the day daytime. Um, or we're going to do an overnight shelter. What are people comfortable with? What's their prime time? What's the, you know, do they want to do six hours? Do they want to do eight hours? Do they, what do they want to do? Now, if it's an overnight shelter, I'm guessing you're going to be playing cards and you're going to be sleeping. No, we weren't waiting. allowed to sleep as the volunteers. We well, had, um, this, this is, I, I, I get that, but I'm trying to run okay. time. Um, <laughs> but this is a town sure, sponsor. No. This is a tri town thing. Mm -hmm. We're not under, those those rules but i i totally get that so if we did open and nobody's showing up and you wanted to snooze fine that's fine you know you're going to hear the door open you're going to get a, a cold burst of air coming on you but it's going to be incident by incident mm -hmm. right 
you as know, long as two people are here, and, <coughs> right? Two people are here, and a lot of this will be, you know, um, between um, Amy and I to, to figure out that what would what would be happening, kind of thing. Yeah, because we used um, six to six, well, <coughs> six to eleven thirty and eleven thirty. Maybe it was seven. I don't know, but we yeah, had it. Let's then. everybody write down some times that work for you in your life right now. <laughs> And tomorrow is a different day, so it might not work tomorrow. <laughs> but, you know, just an idea of where we're all coming from, what will work. Myself being the, the director for emergency management, um, I have found that a tailgate EOC is best, and that means working out of my truck and going to place to place because cell service is terrible. Um, so it's very likely I would be here with you kind of thing if, if we were doing it overnight. I'd be camped out at the, at the school. Yeah. You know, with everybody because that's easier for me to get down into the bottom part of Brookfield and, and et cetera. So, you know, there's there's latitude of movement. You know, so we just gotta figure out what works for us as a group and go from there. You could also do comp like you could do twelve hour shifts or you could do six like you could split them. People could choose just as long as you have all the time covered. Right. Like say Kim and I split a 12-hour shift, but if somebody wants to do the whole 12-hour shift, they could do that. They then do that. people would, if they felt they couldn't do, I can't do a whole 12 hours, but I could do six hours. Right. If you make it a combination, it right. will give more flexibility for people. Yep. It's a more of a scheduling nightmare, but. Right. Is that, is that something you really plan, a, plan ahead? We want it planned ahead to a point, a rough. It, it, you know, like, I said, like I said before, you know, you, you said you could volunteer. I call you up, and you say, "Juice, things are happening. I can't do it." Okay, great. Next, right. yeah. You know, so everybody has to be flexible, and everybody has to be understandable and respectful to each other's lives and what's happening. Yeah, I would get the phone calls at eleven thirty when a volunteer didn't okay. show up and get to cover the night. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yes. But what is EOC? EOC. EOC, I don't know what that Emergency is. Emergency Operation Center. 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 It is Center. Okay, good guess. <laughs> 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 Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we could email everyone. Yeah. Schedule Yeah. Center. Um, my cell phone number is wrong. Oh. Yeah. The area code for me is nine seven three. Did you? You didn't get my text. Nope. <laughs> no, 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 operator error. My fault. String me up. It is a cell phone. There must be a penalty for that. <laughs> she told me to smack her hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't do it. So we're, we're officially done. We're done. Yeah, cool. Does that work? Yeah. And if you need to contact me.